Hey, what's up guys? So now we know what our kind of staples are essentially cards that you should probably look into running as far as in your um, your main extra deck. Uh, we're going to go over the black cards, which are the Exceed monsters. Now, I won't go over essentially how to summon them. I'm pretty sure you guys could at least understand that. Uh, if you didn't know how to do that, you can look up you know the rulings. Uh, I'm pretty sure you should not watch a TV show for that because on the TV show, sometimes they do do things that you're not supposed to be doing. <laughs> but that said, I'm going to go over the uh, Exceed or the black cards um, that you, you probably want to uh, run your extra deck in what essentially is considered kind of staple, meaning that, you know, uh, regardless of what deck you're playing, you probably want some of these cards. Some of these, just like Synchros, they require specific ones. Uh, these ones, for example, Blade Armor Ninja, requires Warrior type. Some other ones, like um, Giga Gigant X, um, he requires um, two level four machine type monsters. So some of these require different things and just, just keep that in mind. So uh, down below in the extract, those are pretty much cards that you probably want to run if you have room. I would recommend those cards. And the side, those cards will go over really quick. Um, and uh, those are cards, you know, for certain decks they work better in. Um, but yeah, let's go over them. So first off, we have Wind Up Zen Main. So I'll briefly talk about these cards and explain what their purpose as far as in the extra deck. Uh, but yeah, basically this card, if you have a bad hand or you need to stall, Zen Mains is your card to go to. Uh, he requires two level three monsters. Um, for Exceed Monsters, you um, you overlay. So basically you just kind of like stack the cards on top of each other. I won't go too much into like how these cards are summoned. I'm sure most of you guys should understand that. If not, again, just, you know, you can Google how to Exceed Summon or, or XYZ uh, Summon. Uh, but yeah, um, so he has an effect, uh, if this card would be destroyed, you get to detach one, and then on the end phase, you get to destroy one card on the field. Uh, that that effect is mandatory, though, so if he's the only card, you, ha you have to destroy himself. But yeah, he's got decent defense, and he's kind of your go-to card if you have a bad hand. Uh, next up, Levier. So, um, he is also a rank 3 exceed, so once per turn you can detach a material to target one uh, banish monster that's 4 lower in either player's graveyard. So if your opponent maybe has something good that you want, or maybe you ban they banished a key card that you need and you need to put it back, yeah, hey, that's pretty good. Um, this card number 17, uh, this card is essentially your kind of big beater. Um, there's also another big beater, uh, we'll put him right next, uh, we'll go over him next. But um, yeah, number 17 is basically a 2500 attacker, and uh, he can become 3000 technically, but uh, yeah, usually that doesn't happen because you just use its effect once, because when he has no material, he can't attack directly. Uh, next card, this is your biggest beater that is rank 3 at the moment, and he's got 3000 tech, but he's kind of a risky card to go to, because... Um, while he's out, you cannot special summon, and each one of your standby phases, you have to detach a material, or you take 2,000 damage. And when it has no material, it can't attack. So what you want to do with this card is when your opponent has a monster that you absolutely need to get over, like a Black Lost Soldier, he is kind of your key card, because um, Zen Mains will not stall too well against Black Lost Soldier. Um, and sometimes this card is just not strong enough, and you need to get over a 3,000 attacker, and crashing this is a fantastic idea. Uh, next card, Abyss Dweller. Now this is a new card that came out in Abyss Rising. Essentially what he's used for is... Um, during either player's turn, um, it, yeah, it's, uh, is it during either player's turn? Uh, yeah, during either player's turn, um, you can detach one material, and any card effects that would activate in your opponent's graveyard cannot be activated this turn, so it's kind of sk uh, a skill drain for the graveyard, so you want to make this card against uh, Dark Worlds and Burma Atlanteans, that's what he's kind of used for. Uh, next up, Gaga Cowboy. Um, He's pretty good because he gets over, he basically point for points just like Acid Golem. He's the rank 4 that um, can essentially point for point 3,000 attackers, but he has, you know, another trick up his sleeve. Uh, that's when he's in attack position. Uh, basically what it says is, uh, when he attacks an, uh, an opponent's monster, this card gains 1,000 attack and the opponent's monster loses 500 attack during the damage step. Um, basically that comes down to he's 3,000 attack. <laughs> uh, but he also has another trick up his sleeve, so when he's in defense position, you can detach one material to inflict 800 points of burn damage. So, uh, you know, maybe your opponent is at very low life, you can just burn them and win the game, maybe think about face down mirror force, hey, no problem. Um, yeah, he's just kind of a card, I think he's just really good because, uh, you know, I like the flexibility of basically making him either 3,000 attack or, you know, putting him in defense mode and, you know, burning him. And he actually has decent defense, it's 2,400. Um, next up, this is My Shrok Symphony of Jin. So this card is another Staller card, essentially, but it has decent attack and decent defense, as well as it kills Cataster. Cataster, off the top of my head, uh, let's bring out Cataster, which is the uh, Synchro card. He has 13, or 1,200, my bad, Thir uh, 1,200 defense, so this card would be able to get over it. So uh, My Shrok's effect is once per turn, you can book a moon, your opponent's monster, but it has to be in face-up attack position. Um, so if it's in defense position, you can't uh, use its effect. Uh, and then he has an effect to protect itself, so if it would be destroyed, you can detach a material instead. 
Um, next up, um, Utopia. This is kind of a, another Staller card, but it has good attack. So it's 2,500, and uh, once per turn... Uh, well, not actually, it's not once per turn. <laughs> My bad. So it's, it's when uh, any player's monster declares an attack, you can detach a material, and then you get to negate that attack. But this is his negative effect. When this card ha is targeted for an attack, and it has no materials, you have to destroy it. So let's say you only have Utopia on the field, and you have no material for Utopia. They attack into you. Your, your Utopia would then die from his effect, and then your opponent can actually attack you directly because uh, the number of monsters on the field has changed, and Utopia dies to his own effect. Uh, so yeah, he's kind of a Staller card, and he's got good attack. Uh, next up, uh, Steel Swarm Roach. This card is getting a reprint soon. He is kind of expensive now, so uh, I believe, I think it's in March he's getting a reprint. I don't recall exactly what the day is, but yeah, this card is getting a reprint, so uh, more people will have access to it in the future. But this card is really good against um, decks that special summon high-level monsters. Like, for example, uh, Chaos Dragons is an excellent example. Um, any Karakuri deck would be kind of a good example, but this is the downside to him. He's got zero defense, so maybe a Karakuri can just move it to defense and just run over it. So that's a downside to him. He's got low defense. Um, next card up. Now I feel like you can either play Black Ship of Corn or Pillar Operative. Now both these cards are essentially to get rid of like Spirit Reaper or anything like annoying like Marshmallow. Um, but yeah, this card basically it targets a face-up monster that your opponent controls with attack less than or equal to this card's uh, attack. And then you get to send it to the graveyard, and if you do, it inflict a thousand points of uh, damage, and this card cannot attack the turn you activate uh, this effect. Now, Papilla Operative, you attach one material, and you select one defense position on a uh, monster on the field, and change it to face-up attack position, and if you do, it loses 600 attack. So, basically, if your opponent has a face-down Spirit Reaper, you can activate this effect. And keep in mind, Spirit Reaper will not um, actually die from it if it is face-down, because uh, Spirit Reaper won't have its effect applied because it's still face down when you're trying to uh, activate Papilla Operative's effect. So, uh, that said, both these cards are pretty good. Um, I mean, personally for me, I think both these cards are good. You kind of just got to look at your options as well as, you know, your playstyle, because if you know your opponent has a Spirit Reaper, hey, maybe this card might be better, because you can just attack everything into Spirit Reaper and just win, because Spirit Reaper will have zero attack. So yeah, you got to look at your options. Um, I mean, this one is a warrior, not that... that really will make a difference, but, you know, some cards that maybe play Solidarity or something, you gotta take that into consideration. Maybe you're playing an all-warrior deck. Maybe this card will be better for you. And then lastly, we have Temtempo, the Percussion Djinn. Um, so he's basically used when your opponent has an Exceed a monster on the field, especially Zen mains. Uh, you'll see people bring this card out a lot, so uh, basically he can attach one material from his card to uh, target one XYZ monster your opponent controls, and you get to detach one material from that monster, and then all these sub Dijin monsters you control gain 500 attack. So not only do you get to get rid of attachments, but you get an attack boost. So he's just overall really solid card against certain um, just decks that just make like Zen mains or something like that. Um, now, I'm just going to mouse over a lot of other great Exceed monsters, but I would consider, again, these cards in the extra deck, I would recommend you guys to uh, check them out and probably play those. I'm going to save real quick before I get disconnected. Um, but yeah, I would consider, well, most of these cards would be considered, I would say, staple. So if you're kind of just jumping into the game, uh, you should probably check out these. And again, um, I remember, I picked four synchros. And again, with these ones, I would recommend you to pick one or the other. I don't think you really need both. And that would be uh, perfect for your... Um, your four synchros that I recommended to you. But again, remember, these aren't set in stone. You don't have to play these. It's just that um, majority of the time, I would say these monsters are the most effective against a lot of the decks in the meta at the moment. And, you know, there's always new Exceed monsters that are made, so maybe I'll update this in the future. But yeah, let me mouse over some other good uh, Exceed monsters really quick, and that way, uh, you know, certain decks can use these more than others, I would say. I'll actually, you know, I will go over some of these, because some of these are kind of important. Um, I don't know why I put that one twice. <laughs> But I guess Diagusa Phoenix is so good, you need two of them. But uh, yeah, some of these are more specific for certain decks. Oh, Excalibur, that's the card that should be in here. Um, but yeah, these ones in the green area of the side, essentially those are really good uh, cards as well, but certain decks could use them better than others. Uh, some of them, you know, require certain things, like this one requires Machine. This one requires level 7s, not every deck, you know, has two level 7s that they can essentially play. But uh, really quick, um, I actually just, kind of just want to touch up upon this one. This one's almost, like, uh, viable for, like, main deck for some essentially. But the thing is, you know, some decks don't have the options to really make it um, as easy. But yeah, Shockmaster, he can shut down uh, certain decks like Dark Worlds or uh, Murma Atlanteans. You know, you can just call effects for those decks, or you can call spells for Dark Worlds, and they can't really do much. Um, this card is like your stun. If you know what your opponent's playing, you can really use this card uh, to your advantage. Um, other cards that are really phenomenally good. Um, this card's good in Agents, but that should be self-explanatory. If you're playing that deck, you should know that. Um, let's go over some of the... Really 
I'm trying to go over some of the ones that maybe you guys might not know. Oh, this card's not actually out yet, but uh, he's really good. He can bounce stuff. He's pretty awesome. Uh, other than that, I think pretty much... Oh, this card... Yeah, this card actually just came out. Uh, I think... I want to come on. I know it was a dual terminal. Maybe it's not out yet. But anyways, um, so he's kind of like a... Uh, it's, um, oh, wait, there's a, there's another one. Is it Emerald? Okay. Bam, it's Emerald. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this card is kind of like a mini Pot of Avarice. Um, and also you can basically Monster Reborn and non-effect Monster. Um, but I don't think that card... Is, that card is out. I'm not sure if Lavalval Chain is out. This card might be out in Dual Terminal. But uh, yeah, going over these, most of these are pretty simple. Um, like this card's really good. This card, oh, this card's actually gonna reprint. So I'll talk about him. So basically, um, he's kind of like a, a mini skill drain, I guess. So once per turn during either player's turn, when a monster's effect is activated on your opponent's side of the field, you can detach one material uh, from this card to negate that effect. And if you do, inflict a thousand. Uh, damage to your opponent. One thing I wanted to mention, especially with this card, is it doesn't destroy the monster. It just negates the effect, and then they take a thousand. So, um, also, if you um, attack a Sangan, you cannot activate Photon Strike Bounder's effect. So, because uh, it has to be activated on your opponent's side of the field, certain cards like Sangan and Mystic Tomato, those activate in the graveyard. So, uh, you cannot use Photon Strike Bouncer, and I just felt like I should mention that. But yeah, I hope this helps you guys out as far as building your extra deck with those Synchros and the Exceeds. Uh, perhaps even fusions, uh, but yeah, um, I mean realistically for fusions There's not anything staple that you know every deck would want to play except for chimera tech I'll just throw this like in here right now uh, because basically it requires cyber dragon plus uh, one or more uh, machine type monsters and you can use your opponent's uh, Field to do this so if you have cyber dragon and your opponent has machines you can just make this but uh, as far as fusions realistically um they're not really seen in like every uh, extra deck, uh, but basically this is the only one that I would say people uh, really like side or main deck in their extra deck. But yeah, I hope this helps you guys out. Make your and this will make your extra deck better. Keep in mind, always play 15 cards. Always, it will not hurt you. Even if you have to play the same copies of I don't know something that you probably can only make once. Maybe, maybe you somehow you can maybe make two. Um, Gustav Maxes. I mean, there's no reason why you wouldn't want to play more in your extra deck than, you know, essentially, like, you know, even if you only have 14, borrow some cards from your friends. You never know when you might need a another second Levy or a second uh, Zen Mains. Keep in mind, um, you know, some decks might want to play two of certain cards. Maybe cer certain cards or certain decks don't want to play any of these at all. Hey, I understand. But these are kind of just for beginners and people jumping into the game as far as um, their extra deck, because, you know, I get requested all the time. What, what staples or what cards should I put in my extra deck? Well, I don't know your deck at all. Like, they won't send me a deck list or anything. They'll be like, what should I put in my extra deck? And I'll be like, well, I mean, I don't know what deck you're playing. So you have to factor that in. Maybe if you're playing all machines, hey, you probably want to check out this card. If you're playing an all warrior deck, hey, you probably want this card. And you probably want uh, this card. But yeah, depending on what deck you're playing, you got to always remember that that is like, kind of important <laughs> to, uh, you know, deciding, uh, you know, what cards you want to play. But if you want to check the synchro version up, I already have it uploaded. You can click on the annotation or visit the description box below. If you cannot click on annotations, and that will help you uh, essentially um, learn as far as what cards essentially you should just throw in your extra deck if you you know have room or you know you you're totally lost you don't know what to put in at all as far as your extra deck you can check out some of these cards. But thanks for watching. I hope this makes you a better duelist. Asian Eyes signing out.